Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. XRP has real value. And by the way, I want to be super clear from the beginning, price is different than value. Most people use those words interchangeably. I make an effort to not do so, I suppose, from time to time I slip up. But they're different when we're talking about price, specifically, at least, you know, as it re re pertains to the cryptocurrency asset class, as it pertains to XRP specifically. We're talking about price. We're talking about the open market value of XRP on exchanges the world over. When we're talking about value, we're, we're talking about the reasons fundamentally that it makes sense for XRP to have a price because there's actual value behind it. And I'm talking about utility. We're talking about network effects. And so I want to discuss that in light of this article from Cointelegraph, which is titled... Does Bitcoin have intrinsic value or is it based on thin air? And although Bitcoin is in the title of this, this applies to crypto in general. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, absolutely, the concept of this, it's a thought-provoking concept I've always thought and absolutely applies to XRP. And so I want to run through this. But before we go any further, if you would please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... Uh, delicately tap the like button, but don't uh, don't get all smashy smashy with it. Hey, hey, you, you over in the corner, Mr. Muscles. I'm looking at you. Don't get all smashy smashy. Are you going to have to deal with an angry Moon Lambo? You don't want none. That trust that. And also go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel because why the hell not? All right, let's dig in now. So when you're talking about intrinsic value. Um, because again, the title of this piece, does Bitcoin have intrinsic value or is it based on thin air? What is intrinsic value? I pulled up an Investopedia website just to see what they had to say about it. I like Investopedia. What is intrinsic value? Intrinsic value is a measure of what an asset is worth. This measure is arrived at uh, by means of an objective calculation or a complex financial model uh, rather than using the currently trading market price of that asset. Now, we can debate, as it pertains to XRP, we could debate about what is a reasonable complex financial model. Uh, we can talk about um, you know, how you arrive at a means of an objective calculation. But uh, again, I just wanted to make very clear here that what we're talking about is actual value versus, uh, versus price. Two very different things. That's why I wanted to start with that. Because then you get this article. Uh, this is from CNBC and it's titled, Warren Buffett Explains One Thing People Still Don't Understand About Bitcoin. <clears throat> and uh, so Warren Buffett, kudos to him for being wildly successful. It doesn't mean he's right about everything. And he's pretty open about the fact that he doesn't actually understand Bitcoin or pretty much technology in general. And... Uh, and, and so ultimately what I've found with his analysis of Bitcoin is that he's using, not just that he's uninformed, that's the problem in and of itself, but on top of that, he's using an incorrect valuation model uh, to, to determine the true value of this particular asset class, which of course, again, includes XRP. So look at some of what he had to say here. I don't want to go through this whole thing, but just some of it. Um, when it comes to Bitcoin, billionaire investor Warren Buffett wants to make one thing clear. Unlike buying stocks, bonds, or real estate, buying Bitcoin is not an investment. That's because it lacks intrinsic value, Buffett says. Oh, does it? And here's a quote. If you buy something like Bitcoin or some cryptocurrency, you don't have anything that is producing anything, Buffett says in an interview with Yahoo Finance. And then it continues the quote, uh, uh, you're just hoping the next guy pays more and only feel uh, you'll find the next guy to pay more if he thinks he's going to find someone that's going to pay more. Well, that last part of uh, what he's describing there, that sounds a lot like stocks. You buy stocks hoping that when you sell it, the next guy is going to pay for it. Is that, is that as in-depth as your uh, analysis of this goes? Um... And then the first part here, and he, he said, you don't have anything that is producing anything with Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency. And that's where we're getting to the part of him having an incorrect valuation model. Of course, cryptocurrencies don't produce anything. That's that, Businesses produce things. And, you know, there can be goods and services. Okay, fine. But I'm, I'm just saying, 
uh, that is the wrong way of looking at it. Just because something doesn't produce something, it doesn't mean that it's unreasonable for it to have actual value, right? You know, it's it, 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 and I understand it's not like gold and Bitcoin are literally a direct comparison. But would you argue that gold shouldn't have a value or, or a price either, either a value or a price because it doesn't produce anything? I don't know. I think the legs of that argument are pretty shaky. So uh, let me scroll down a little bit further because he kind of expanded on this concept. I think it was towards the end of the article. Let me see if I can find it here for y'all. Um, I think it was down here. Eh, maybe it was a little higher. I'm sorry. I thought I knew where it was. Maybe it was just right about here. Oh, yeah, here you go. Here's the quote I was thinking of. He says, this is Warren Buffett again. If you buy something like a farm, an apartment house, or an invest or an interest in a business and look to the asset itself to determine whether you've done something, what the farm produces, what the business earns, it's a perfectly satisfactory investment. And Buffett explains to, to Yahoo Finance, and he says, quote, You look at the investment itself to deliver the return to you. Um, and then he says, if you, uh, if you ban trading in farms, you could still buy farms and have a perfectly decent investment, Buffett says. And so he's completely uh, disregarding the fact that you can have business models that could not technologically exist without this technology. And not just the technology. It can't just be blockchain. It has to be blockchain with a coin attached that is decentralized and has an open market value. He's absolutely missing that. Uh, in terms of uh, tr transmittal of funds without uh, w without a middleman, that's something that you couldn't do. And that's not a use case that excites me as much because I have the United States dollars. That's why I'm not running a Bitcoin channel. I'm, I'm running or, or a broad uh, crypto channel. This is an XRP specific channel because to me, the utility is what makes this interesting. That and having actual my own, <coughs> having invested my own United States dollars in this. And and so, but so I don't talk a whole lot about, the, you know, this, this concept of, uh, um, you know, not in some sort of rah-rah way anyway, that, uh, yeah, you could use a cryptocurrency in place of fiat currency. Okay, but, but conceptually, there is something to that. And for people that want to con conduct uh, transactions in that way, where there's Bitcoin or pick your cryptocurrency, and we'll see which ones end up having staying power, just as, as uh, you know, we continue to see the maturation of the asset class, there are people that genuinely value that. I personally, today in 2020, don't care about that use case. My dollars are just fine, and I think most of the world feels like that, which is why, on top of technological issues, that's, a, that's just another reason that you're, you're not seeing people in, uh, in mass adopt cryptocurrencies in place of fiat currencies. What problem are you really solving? What friction is there? Now, for those that do have friction, third world countries perhaps, there can be all sorts of terrible uh, governments that uh, run their fiat currencies into the ground. You have runaway inflation. Okay, that stuff can happen. And then there's a pretty reasonable argument to say, okay, let's see if something like a cryptocurrency can take off and replace that in a meaningful way. For perfectly fine. It's also possible that a United States uh, CBDC, you know, central bank digital currency, U.S. digital dollar, maybe that uh, might take the place of that also in those instances to give you easier access to the United States dollar the world over. Maybe, maybe. I'm not saying it will. I'm just kind of spitballing here. But still, it, it, there is something to a network effect. There is a reason this all exists. And that's why I've said, although I'm confident in XRP, and I'm not offering financial advice, no financial background here, I'm confident in the long-term viability of XRP. But I'm even more sure of, of uh, just the idea that cryptocurrency as an asset class is here to stay, uh, regardless of whether I'm right or wrong about XRP. Because again, I know for sure that things can be done with this that you simply cannot do as an individual and as a business. And if you can't see the genuine value of that, I'm sorry, you are missing something of critical importance here. Maybe uh, think a little bit further through this before firming, forming such a, a firm opinion here. And there are a couple of quotes in this piece from Cointelegraph I want to run through too. Um, in July 2019, uh, President Trump echoed the sentiment earlier shared by Buffett and his business partner, Charlie Munger, when he claimed that the value of Bitcoin is based on thin air. Well, okay, then the value of gold's based on thin air. So what? You know, the value of the United States dollar, which is not backed by anything, it's based on thin air. You know, it, it, well, the price certainly is. Right? 
<laughs> right? Or, or no, I guess maybe value would be the right the right word for that. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe both, actually. I'd have to sit there and think about it. I, I don't want to sit here and parse through it in my mind as I'm sitting here just uh, providing a stream of consciousness. But <laughs> suffice it to say, um, you know, gold's not backed by anything. The United States dollar's not backed by anything. Bitcoin's not backed by anything. X, or XRP's not backed by None of these things are backed by anything. And they also, you know, these things don't produce anything in and of themselves. But there's still... Um, they're still used to it here. And so here's a quote from President Trump. I am not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Again, that's kind of rich, uh, you know, just because, again, the United States dollar not backed by anything. Absolutely not. Um, here's a tweet from this Charlie Munger guy. He's just a breath of fresh air. He, he said, uh, Bitcoin reminds me of Oscar Wilde's definition of fox hunting, the pursuit of the uneatable by the unspeakable. <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm sorry. Um, next here, here's another quote. Uh, safe haven assets like gold, for instance, which investors foresee Bitcoin would compete against over the long run, have seen many instances wherein gold held by individuals were seized by governments in the past. And um, and Paul told, who, did we get the full name here? Uh, Ari Paul. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ari Paul told Cointelegraph, quote, Bitcoin is many things. Its value comes as, uh, as the only way to pay for Bitcoin blockchain space, a.k.a. censorship resistance as a service. But I'd argue far more of its value comes from its seizure resistance. If I want to store $1 of wealth in a way that can't be arbitrarily seized by governments, I need to own $1 of Bitcoin, regardless of Bitcoin's price per dollar. With that framing, it's vaguely comparable to the offshore banking system, which is roughly $30 trillion. Now, conceptually, what he's talking about there, I'm on board with it. And again, this use case doesn't particularly excite me. I'm not worried about this, all the this seizure stuff, this and that. And I understand a lot of the uh, down with bank, down with governments guys. This is a big selling point for them. My God, I don't care. I seriously do not care. If it starts to become a problem, maybe I'll start to care. But even then, I already own cryptocurrency, so whatever, okay? <laughs> even if that became a thing. Super duper. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just not sold on the importance of that uh, halfway through 2020 here. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm, you know, there, but but um, there is absolutely something to that. And for people, even if, even if the, you know, the, you're, you're of my mindset and you don't think that it's a big problem, if you want to have it as a hedge against uh, perhaps it mattering one day, well, there you go. There's value right there, intrinsic value. I think it's sufficiently defined that way. And again, you can go back to what specific metrics you could have a long conversation about that, which is outside the scope of this video as far as what would make up a reasonable model for the intrinsic value of a cryptocurrency. Willing to have that conversation, but to outright, outright state that it doesn't exist, to me, you have to either be uninformed or intellectually dishonest to hold that opinion. That's how I feel. I think it's nonsensical. Tell me what you think below. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.